For those unfamiliar with the franchise, the Saints Row games are a series of titles focusing on a turf war against multiple factions across a map. Many dismiss the first game as a Grand Theft Auto clone, but the fact is that the entire series was built on the idea of taking concepts from other games and building on them. The series became increasingly ridiculous with every new game, with the fourth entry in the series granting the Saints superpowers in a Matrix-like virtual world and pitting them against alien invaders. It was because of how ridiculous things got that Volition decided it was time to reboot the franchise, pulling things back after how ridiculous everything had become. I bought the game on launch day in spite of all the negative reviews, and literally spent the first week just waiting for the other shoe to drop and for the fun to end. It never did. All I got was an enjoyable game with a perplexingly negative reception. I normally uphold a degree of neutrality, getting people curious about what I'm going to say. I felt in this instance, however, that making my stance explicit would actually help it stand out more. I'll start with the positives. Like other entries in the series, the main focus of the game is to build a criminal empire and take the map over. This game grants you the ability to take districts over by building illegitimate businesses in them, which is a brilliant way to address a glaring issue sandbox games tend to have. It actually gives the minigames a purpose. The more challenges you complete and the more you clear the districts of rival factions, the higher your income from the business will be. It gives you more of a valid reason than just busy work. I found the game to be pretty enjoyable overall. Though it's definitely a game that favors target locking over free aim, and I didn't feel as much of a difference in the different types of weapon in each weapon class. The Saints Row games have always been renowned for their ridiculous levels of customization. This game takes things to a whole new level. You can literally stop whatever you're doing and customize everything about your character from the clothing to your physical features wherever you are. Everything can be done from your phone in the game, whenever you want, as many times as you want. Guns and vehicles can also be extensively customized as well, though I tend to stick to a purple color scheme to immerse myself in that classic Third Street Saints experience. Like other entries in the series, the game boasts a number of radio stations with a number of memorable songs on them. The Garage Rock station in particular really helps sell the arid climate of Santo Alesso. You can practically hear the sand in their blown out speakers. My favorite segment of missions, which I was surprised to find got a negative reception, was the Game Within a Game Dust Moot Quests, which finds your character LARPing with one of the members of your team in cardboard armor on the outskirts of town. This honestly felt like the game at its most comfortable. The writers clearly had a blast lovingly poking fun at RPGs. There's also a callback to Professor Genki in the form of the Boot Hill livestream which features the protagonist gunning their way through swarms of other bloodthirsty contestants on a remote island. Shockingly, this isn't an unlockable activity after the mission is completed. Where I feel the game slumps is with some of the decisions made for its characters and its story. The characters are an odd juxtaposition of jokey sitcom characters who talk about singing karaoke while doing crimes that they honestly don't seem like they'd be comfortable committing. It's a little dissonant and isn't addressed or acknowledged. It feels like they were influenced by the plucky non-violent hacktivist group in Watch Dogs 2, which is an odd choice because the Saints have always been a gang of hardened criminals in previous games. The comedy feels a little forced as well, and many of the jokes honestly don't land. It's like being around a friend who thinks they're hilarious because your politeness keeps them going, even though you kind of wish they'd stop. The other factions feel very underdeveloped. So who they are and what their rivalry with the Saints is doesn't feel very deserved. Supplementary reading gave me a better idea of who they were supposed to be, but it still wasn't necessarily a reflection of who they were in the game. Furthermore, the edges of the game all feel sanded down compared to previous entries in the series, which makes the stakes feel lower and the game feel less impactful when significant moments occur in the story. However, the blandness of the characters and the issues with the story are forgivable, because everything is taking a back seat in service to the gameplay experience itself, which is addictive and fun once you find your rhythm in the turf war and start to level up in the game. Interestingly enough, in spite of this game being an explicit reboot, there are references to previous games in the series, including Johnny Gat, Professor Genki, the giant Saints Flow monster, and even Agents of Mayhem. There's a couple of common complaints I've noticed that I wanted to address in this part of the review. The game is too short. 
Look at this map of activities. Look at it. You're gonna tell me you did all the side hustles, collected all the collectibles, fought all of the gangs, did all of the venture quests, played all of the story missions, and you still feel like it wasn't too short? Come on now. Everything is too expensive. Uh, yeah, that's the point of the game. To build a criminal empire so you can afford everything. The map isn't densely populated. Have you ever been to the American Southwest? I have recently. It really is that sparse. The graphics are outdated. I'm gonna be honest with you, I feel like game graphics plateaued with the last generation of consoles. As long as the graphics aren't interfering with the gameplay, I feel like this is a moot point. The game isn't as over the top as previous titles. That was the point. Verdict? In a world full of stagnating franchises and pointless remasters, I'm grateful to see a AAA title from a company that's still willing to take risks and try new things instead of trying to pedal cars and online bonuses for a nearly decade-old online game. Until next time, game on.